Over the last few years, the Memphis Grizzlies have been the poster child for development in the NBA. They've turned so many young players into high quality, productive, net positive players. Guys like Desmond Bain, a guy that was the 30th overall pick back in 2020, who is now one of the premier shooters in the NBA, and he might be a future all-star. Brandon Clark, the 21st overall pick in 2019, was a pivotal piece for them during their first round matchup against the Minnesota Timberwolves last season, with his offensive rebounding legitimately helping them win that series. Then back in 2018, they had the fourth overall pick, using it on Jaron Jackson Jr. Now, Jaron Jackson Jr. was not a reach with the fourth overall pick. He was largely predicted to go in the top five, so this pick was viewed as the right pick for the Grizzlies. He's always been expected to develop into an all-star caliber player, but Jaron Jackson Jr.'s development has been far from linear. Last season was the season where we saw him take a leap into frequent defensive player of the year conversations, and while the offense was still a little bit shaky, he made a lot of improvements. He's had seasons where some stuff would get better, but other stuff would get worse. It just always felt like he's not quite put everything together all at once until this season. After missing the first month or so of the season, Jaron Jackson Jr. is back and he looks like the best player he's ever been. He made his return on November 15th and through 11 games so far, he's putting up 18.4 points per game, 6.2 rebounds, and 3.6 blocks per game on 51.1% shooting from the field and 62.7% true shooting. Keep in mind, all of these are career highs and he's also recording a career low in personal fouls, an area that Jackson Jr. has always struggled a little bit to rein in. Without Jaron Jackson Jr. to start the season, the Grizzlies were a bottom 10 defense in the NBA with a defensive rating of 112.4 points per 100 possessions. Since his return though, the Grizzlies are the third best defense in the entire league with a defensive rating of 107.4 points per 100 possessions, a five point improvement from the stretch at the beginning of the season without him. Help defense is one of the most valuable things that a big man can provide on the interior, and Jaron Jackson Jr. provides just that, and so far this season, he's been doing it at an elite level. The reason why help defense is so valuable from a team perspective is because it allows for a player to make up for the mistakes or blown coverages of his teammates. Even if your defense isn't particularly strong on defending the perimeter, you can make up for it with reliable weak side help rotations on the interior, like Jaron Jackson does. Just because his teammates get beat off the dribble when closing out, Jaron Jackson Jr. is gonna be able to recover for them following the ball handler to the rim to force misses and get blocks. I wanna point out the way in which Jaron Jackson Jr. goes up with his matchups when he's contesting these shots. Hoop Venue did a great job of profiling this in his video on Draymond Green. I'll leave a link in the description if you wanna check that out. But Jackson Jr. doesn't actually jump at the offensive player when he's contesting their shots. He'll instead jump away from them, almost falling away from their shot, making it more difficult for them to draw contact and making it easier for him to get the block without fouling. He's able to do this because of his seven foot four wingspan. As long as he gets his hands up and as long as he's moving away from them, he can get the block without getting called for a foul. When ball handlers reject screens in the pick and roll, his ability to recover and meet them at the rim when the primary defender gets beat makes up for so much on the defensive end for his teammates. This kind of stuff is just so valuable. He doesn't need to be right up on the shooter to get a block either. Jackson Jr. is incredibly athletic and lengthy with that seven foot four wingspan. So even if he's jumping from the restricted area to contest a shot outside the paint, he can still get a hand up on it and disrupt the shot. In my previous videos about Jaron Jackson Jr., I've talked about how he's more versatile than his sheer lateral movement and overall containment ability on the perimeter would make you believe. Just because he gets beat off the dribble, he's still very much liable to get the block from behind due to his raw foot speed and wingspan. This is a type of defensive event creation or defensive playmaking. He's actively manipulating the offense to do something that he knows gives him a good chance of getting a block. Do you understand how valuable that is? The fact that a guy can manipulate offenses to make them do what he wants them to do so he can effectively end their possession? It elevates their defense so much. Real quick guys, I wanna thank the sponsor of today's video, Underdog Fantasy. With Underdog's NBA Pick'em, they make it super simple to win big. 
They've got individual player props to pick from for every single NBA game. All you have to do is pick higher or lower, and once you have your slip, make your wager and submit. You can make wagers for as low as $1 and win anywhere from three times your money all the way up to 20 times your money. And now with Pick'em Insurance, you can still win money even if one of your picks doesn't hit. Sign up using code AlexHoops with the link in the description today, and they'll match your first deposit up to $100. Be sure to play responsibly, and thanks again to Underdog for sponsoring today's video. And it's not just the defensive end of the floor this year for Jackson. He's been crucial for helping them improve their offense, which has gotten noticeably better, and the numbers are backing that up. He's been a fantastic spot-up shooter this season. Out of all the players attempting at least five spot-up field goal attempts so far this season, Jaron Jackson is recording the third highest points per possession on these attempts with 1.2 points per possession. Jaron Jackson is such an interesting player because you can see how effective of a defender he is when he's operating as a big man, but offensively, he doesn't exactly play like one. But this season, I've noticed him leveraging that unique blend of size and ball handling ability to make a more conscious effort to get inside and get to the basket. He's not settling as much for jumpers, something that I think he had a bit of a tendency to do in the past. He's a giant of a player, and I think he realizes now that he can use that size, strength, and speed to get by pretty much anybody in front of him. His off-ball play has been really solid as well, being able to pass to his teammates and recognize when the defense is giving him an opportunity to receive the pass for a shot, capitalizing on this double team by the Pistons to get an easy corner three. He'll recognize this empty corner pick and roll going on and with the defense preparing to guard the drive, he makes a cut from the weak side up to the arc, opening up a wide open pass for him to get the ball and pull the shot. When he drives here, he pulls the defenders in with him before passing it out to Ja Morant. Now Ja, one of the best drivers in the league, is going to demand a ton of defensive attention when he's getting downhill from the top of the key, so it allows Morant to draw the defense towards him before kicking it out to Jackson for the three. He's been a great boost to their offense, and since his return to the team, they've had a deadly lineup containing Ja Morant, Dylan Brooks, John Conchar, Jaron Jackson Jr., and Steven Adams. This lineup has an offensive rating of 123 points per 100 possessions and a defensive rating of 100.9. That's an absurd net rating of 22.2, which is the second best net rating of any lineup in the NBA that's played at least 200 possessions together so far. I doubt he's done improving either because he was doing a lot of stuff last year that he hasn't really been doing this year, like operating as the ball handler at times and doing his own creation off the dribble. We know from his ability to attack closeouts that he's capable of putting the ball on the floor and we saw him create for himself last season. Once he starts to get back to doing a little bit more of that stuff, I fully expect him to start getting into that 20 plus point per game range. He's elevated their entire team since his return. And keep in mind, the Grizzlies don't even have Desmond Bain in the lineup right now since he's been out with an injury. They sit at 18 and nine, good enough for the second seed in the Western Conference, and that's not even while at full strength. They've got Ja Morant, who is arguably a top 10 player in the NBA, Desmond Bain, who is a historically great shooter and continuously developing offensive force, and Jaron Jackson Jr., who is a Defensive Player of the Year caliber big man who continues to grow into a nearly 20-point-per-game scorer. You really can't ask for much better of a young core than that. This feels like it could be the year that Jaron Jackson Jr. takes that leap into an all-star caliber player. His scoring is the best it's ever been, and if that three-point shot keeps falling and he keeps sticking with what works on the offensive end, the Grizzlies having a three-headed monster of Ja Morant, Desmond Bain, and Jaron Jackson Jr. is a terrifying big three to move forward with. If you guys enjoyed this video and you want to see more like this, let me know in the comments and be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Thanks again to Underdog for sponsoring today's video. Be sure to click the link below to sign up. Thank you guys so much for watching and supporting me, and I'll see you in the next one.